Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode here on my own uh, personal Minecraft server. And today I am very excited to announce that I have... Well, I finished a really big project. I'd been stewing over it for a little bit, and I'd mentioned it a little bit in some of my previous videos, and I'm actually standing in the middle of it right now. Well, when I say that, I mean... This is a flower farm that I've had for a minute. And up until, well, earlier today, it was a flower farm that I had to control manually with a couple of different buttons. But I am proud to announce that I have been playing around with a bunch of redstone and I have found a way to make it automated and fully AFKable as that is something that's really been a challenge that I've been trying to come up with on my own. So let's just walk around the basics of the machine real quick to show you kind of how that works. So up here at the top, we have a set of different dispensers. I believe I have nine of them. And on the back side here, we have some redstone uh, dust lined up to activate them on the cycle of a couple of different well, it's a pretty basic repeater line actually, uh, just to make sure that they all stay repaired and this runs down into the ground to the brains of the operation which we'll get to in just a second. Now the other portion of this is here along the sides. I have four different dispensers which you then need to fill up with bone meal and they have a pretty similar array with the one, well the two main adjustments being one their line comes together right here, or uh, if you're going outwards towards the farm, it branches right here at this point. And you'll notice that these are set to different times. As these ones are just standard repeaters to pass along the signal, they are set to the one tick delay, whereas these repeaters here at the end are set to a three tick delay, and these ones are set all the way up to the four tick delay on that cycle. And then of course, this passes back down and gets down to the brains of the operation. And real quick before we get underneath, this is the actual switch that powers the farm on and off in just a standard redstone line that kind of doubles back down around here and connects at the bottom. But you want to see the good stuff. So let's jump into the brains of this operation and kind of showcase how this is set up to work. Now, admittedly, I did not come up with the design for this clock, but I did have to do a lot of messing around with it to get it to the timing that I wanted and needed specifically. So here's the way that this clock works. I got this from a Minecraft tutorial uh, specifically the hopper timer tutorial from Ethos Lab. So that was really integral in helping me to get this working. And I actually saw it a couple weeks ago and this kind of came into my mind as something that could be done and I'm really glad that I was able to actually pull it off. But that redstone line that you saw up top actually snakes around and powers this little torch here. And what's important about this torch is while it's on, it pauses the items here in the hopper. You see that I've got 10 different bricks that will pass back and forth between here. And as soon as they all flow into the one, this uh, redstone block will shift over and cause it to go to the opposite side. Now, the real magic happens here with this little deal. And I, I'll fully admit, I don't understand how it works or why it works. I'm just really happy that it does. So as this redstone block shifts back and forth from one spot to the other, it will either connect with this redstone repeater here or this exposed redstone wiring. And what happens here is it branches off at these two areas. And subsequently, this note block that's left over here will uh, be sounded every single time that this ticks uh, either to either side. And I've placed dirt blocks on top of it just to keep the sound from emanating off of the top as it's not necessary and can kind of get monotonous if you're not careful. But from there, I needed to find a way to pass along the signal. And as it turns out, every single cycle, every single cycle, this note block will ring out and as it does, it will send a signal up this line, which is inverted here to this redstone torch, which will then you know, carry out the remainder of the signal out to the top. 
And this one, because I have an observer hooked up next to it, every single time it sounds, the observer will pick up the action. And so on every half cycle, it will send its message up to the top as well. So the way that that ends up working is about like this. So let's go turn it on and look at the underside working of how it toggles back and forth. I'll even strip away the uh, dirt that's on top of the note block so you can kind of see and visualize what I'm talking about as well. So let's take this off and take this off as well. And you'll notice, and kind of here, and now it's not making a great sound because I just have it under over stone, which is fine for the overall functionality of it. But you can see every full cycle, both note blocks will sound, whereas every half cycle, just this one over here on the left, will sound and uh, make noise and subsequently be picked up by this uh, observer here. And you'll see that that line flashes every single time whenever there's activity that happens here. Whereas this time it didn't sound there, but if we back up for the next cycle, you'll notice that it does light up and send the signal out that way. Now, why is this all important? Well, I'm glad you asked. So let's have a look at exactly why this is the way that it is as we come up to the top here. And that's just to kind of close up this hole, I need to do some modification to actually make it look nice. But as we have every half cycle come around, this will turn the water buckets or the water dispensers in the back on and off. And every full cycle, when we have the light tick through here, you'll see the delay is timed out just to the point where as the water recedes, it is just at the exact timing that's needed to actually dispense the bone meal onto this field. And it produces a very handsome amount of mainly wheat seed, but it also gives us flowers every now and again. And the flowers are really what we're after uh, when it comes to working this farm. Now, the only other thing that I guess I didn't really outline is these dispensers, I do have some upside down stairs placed so I can access the dispensers and refill them with bone meal as needed, which can be produced by my creeper farm because it isn't uh, fully efficient at just doing creepers. Uh, or with the skeleton grinder that we have over there. But I'm really, really, really happy <laughs> with how well this has come together. And just to kind of give you an idea of how efficient it is working, I've actually got to take this little deal out here. But you can see down here to the chest at the bottom, these are all of the flowers that it separated out uh, previously. So up to this point, these were all of the flowers that it had uh, created minus a couple of the poppies, as well as this shulker box here, which is the main reason I have this farm up and going, because I need these oxide daisies and the azure bluets for dye for a big project down here. As you can see, it's uh, I haven't touched it since my video on Saturday, but I'm in need of industrial amounts of gray light gray stained glass, which you can get from both of these flowers in this shulker box here. I also need the black dye for the full effect. Um, and though there's not a flower that you can grow with using this method, uh, it's uh, I've got several rivers that spawn very high amounts of squid. And that uh, is, is just really well. Now, sure, this may not be the most efficient flower farm on the planet, but it's one of my own design, and I spent over a week tinkering with this redstone to get it exactly how it needs to be, and that's what makes me really happy about it, because it's working so very well, and I was literally jumping for joy uh, the first time that I uh, saw that the timing was down and it was working exactly as it needed to. I mean, just look at all of these flowers that come in. Well. Uh, you can AFK this farm as long as you stay within the loadable chunks, but because I uh, don't have a need for it currently, I am going to go ahead and pause it, and you'll see that the cycle does pause on the cycle where it actually dispenses the bone meal onto the farm and grows everything. Uh, but that's not the hugest of concerns. The only other adjustment that I may end up making to this farm is covering the top with some glass, and that is primarily because... I don't like it when mobs make their way up to the top, which at this stage, it's few and far between, but uh, Spider-Man, Enderman, 
the Spider-Men. Spiders and Endermen will make their way in, and other mobs, if they make their way here to the backside, they can easily uh, walk up and fall into the farm, which isn't the biggest deal. It's just a little bit of a nuisance that I don't want to have to deal with. But yeah, that is my design for this flower farm that I can leave running to collect large amounts of dye. And then I actually just take the flower, either the flowers that I'm not using currently or the wheat seeds as I don't need that many. And I take them up here to my uh, automatic composter. And since I've got so many shulker boxes, which was showcased in the episode where we talked all about dyes and where to get them, uh, I just go ahead and fill up all of the things that I don't really need into a shulker box here, and the auto composter will turn it into bone meal, which I can then throw right back into the farm. Of course, I'm going to need to supplement that with uh, bone meal from skeletons, but that's why we have uh, two different grinders that we can use for that at this point in time as well. But I do want to thank you for checking out this video, and I'd love to hear some feedback as to what you think about this particular flower design. If you really love it and enjoy it, uh, then feel free to leave a like on the videos. That would greatly help me out as I look forward to doing other projects like this in the future. And hey, if uh, while you're here, why not subscribe to the channel? It's uh, The subscription's free and easy, and I bring content to you from many different games on a daily basis. So thanks again for taking the time to watch, and I hope that you have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day. Take care, and bye-bye. <laughs>